Hey guys, Justice Curry. I have an amazing episode. We are going to talk about muscle men. I love muscle men. So do we! <laughs> and I brought an expert. This guy knows everything there is to know about muscle men. My good buddy Jason, I flew him all the way from Argentina. Come out, Jason! Imitate it, never duplicate it. It's JD Blaze. It's time to pop, pop, pop. Blaze it up, Oh my. Jason, we're uh, talking about I muscle see, men. Come with me, please. <laughs> Not wrestling. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Dude, wrong wrestling, dude. Oh, like. Wrestling figures? Yes, wrestling figures. I didn't yes. think you were getting ready. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, we're gonna take five. I'll edit this part out later. I run it like a point guard. Justice Curry, the trading. Hey guys, Justice Curry. I have a video that I am super excited to make because I've been wanting it for several years and I brought in a flew in an expert. Yes, an expert, and you're gonna see why in a minute, because this guy knows his stuff. My good buddy, Jason. Hey, Jason. Hello, Thanks for joining us. We actually kind of talked about this when we first met six, seven years ago. Correct. We were at a toy store, kind of talking and he was playing with some G.I. Joe. He had a Muscle Man shirt on. And I'm like, dude, I love freaking Muscle Man. And you don't have a tattoo, Muscle Man tattoo. It was a snake guy's. I have a Cobra Commander tattoo or the Cobra logo tattoo on the back of my neck. Yeah. That's right, that's yeah. right. Uh, we are gonna dive into the world of Muscle Man. Muscle Man million of unusual small creatures lurking, lurking everywhere. everywhere. That's right. In the early 80s, these came out, but we're gonna kind of dive into who their predecessors were in Japan. Um, and people always ask me, what's your favorite toy line, Justice? Is it G.I. Joe, He-Man? I love G.I. Joe and He-Man, but this is gonna, this is gonna probably make please, some people please, hit please. that subscribe button. Hit My that subscribe real love button. is Muscle Men. These are just some of the examples that we're gonna dive into and show you. Uh, but Muscle Men was the very first thing that I remember. One of my very first memories when I had my tonsils removed, uh, my mother took me into a Toys R Us and she said, pick anything in the entire store. What do you want after your surgery? You can't open it until after your surgery. I'm, you know, four or five years old. And I remember looking at one of these 20, what is it, 20, 20. 28 packs. Yep. And I picked this. It was the color versions, not the original flesh version that came out, which we'll describe in a moment. Um, but yes, these were my first love, my very first memories. And so that sentimental thing that keeps us all collecting, that nostalgia gene started with this and it's still running strong. So Jason, kind of tell me what we have going on here. Sure, so um, you know what, gravita what people gravitated towards uh, was basically the displays. So um, without knowing a lot of the mythos back in the day, and we'll get to that, uh, predecessors, but around 1985, uh, when Mattel came out with uh, Muscle, um, there's a couple different different displays that you saw. So here we have an unpunched, carded, blistered four pack, which is nice because you can see the characters that you get. You could rifle through, um, you know, the store shelving, and pick out some of your favorite wrestlers or you know creatures that uh, you know that you had. Um, there was a PO box offer for a collector's poster which is super awesomely displayed right here. Um, so this one would be what we would call a series two. Uh, series one of 236 uh, officially released characters uh, would have been all flesh tone. Uh, we so do the have, original poster would have been all flesh. Yeah, correct. So we're talking about these characters here. So all, this says 233. But over time, as us collectors uh, have started to communicate worldwide and through the interweb, um, we have noticed that there are actually more North American figures uh, that can be collected that necessarily don't, aren't represented on this poster. Right. So the first poster, when you mailed it in, would have been all flesh tone, and then wave two, instead of getting in a different assortment of sculptures, we got Wave 1 just recolored in some of these cool wacky wild colors. 
um, that we'll, we'll dive into as well. And so. it was a genius marketing strategy, similar to G.I. Joe, where you looked on the back of the card art, you would see all the other figures that were available. So if you're at the store, you, maybe they didn't have a Baroness or whatnot similar to this. So they would have you mail that in to get the poster, and now you'd have the poster and it would be almost like a checklist of, Correct. ooh, I want that, which would cause your parents to go back to the store, you back to the store, and try to get them all, collect them right. all. Um, even this poster has some of these uh, check marks and check dots. Marks and, and, dots. Like that, yeah. and coincidentally, I got this poster back in middle school. My friend was uh, lived down the road, and he mailed in for the poster. I said, can I borrow it? I want to look up some of my muscle men. And he said, sure. And unfortunately, I never gave it back. <laughs> but I got to tell you this. Now in my adult years, I met, I wanted to get this poster framed and matted. And I reached out to him. I haven't talked to him in 10 plus years. And I said, hey, I still have your mu muscle man poster. I want to get it framed, but I feel horrible because I never gave it back to you when we were kids. And he's like, dude. I don't care, keep it. And sidebar note, he ended up investing in Bitcoin when Bitcoin was nothing, and now he's a multi-millionaire. Just craziness. Well, full circle, you got a cool poster. He got <laughs> he millions, says, millions of dollars. Million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we mentioned the four packs. Yeah, the Blister Carter four pack. There's which, others some version. Correct, yeah, so this is a way, you don't amass a lot of figures, but you at least get to see what you're getting. So you can kind of selectively choose which characters, uh, and they've always been wrestling characters to me, um, just because of the you know top rope flight. Um, Nintendo came out with an NES version for the, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and it was all wrestling themed. So they never, you know, they have creature in the name, but everything about these were fantasy fiction wrestling characters to me, to my core. Yes. Um, so don't get a lot, but you at least can see what you're getting. And now a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of only getting pennies to the dollar when you sell your collection? Well, look no further. Justice Curry is here to buy your collection. That was too Better Call Saul-ish. I better tone it down a little bit. Let me be real with you. I wanted to throw this out there because obviously I finance my collecting by flipping toys. Buying it, selling it for a profit, bankrolling it, and then being able to purchase it without using my real family finances. Well, to do that, people reach out to me constantly to sell me their collections, part of their collections, a few toys here and there. But So I wanted to throw this out there. So if you ever get to a point where you wanna sell off a portion of your collection or your entire collection, reach out to me. I will give you fair deals. Typically what I, I'm upfront with people, I will give you 50% of eBay sold value not buy it the high buy it nows but the bidding sold values i'm your guy i'll travel anywhere we can do deals through pms with facebook so don't hesitate to reach out to me if you want to sell some of that because on ebay you're going to have the 15 percent paypal and ebay fees taking out so i'm only really netting 35 percent if that's something that you want to sell individually to maximize your profits, awesome. If you don't want to deal with the hassle of selling hundreds or thousands of items, talk to me because I enjoy doing this. And plus, I like to keep some of the very special things from people's collections and then sell the stuff. So I will buy anything and everything unless it's Beanie Babies or Vinyl Pops. Love y'all. So that transitions us to probably the most iconic. When every time I say muscle men to anybody, the trash can, the trash can 10 pack is what everybody's mind immediately goes to. It's, oh, you mean the guys that came in the trash can? Oh, you mean those little guys that came in? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And now, my kids busted this open. It was a sealed trash can, similar to the four packs. The flesh versions came out first. Yep, yep, so this would be a series one 10 pack. 
and you don't know how many times I've strained my eyeballs holding those up to the store light because they're milky. Try, trying to see if there's anybody in there that I need. <laughs> now, um, like the poster, this would be a Series 2 10 pack because now you can start to see a little Skittle variety of colors <laughs> in here. And um, so this became a little bit harder to uh, kind of decipher who's in there. But um, but again, you know, all the different cool colors in here. Uh, it's one of those things you got to collect them all. If I've got one guy in flesh, I got to have the same guy in green and purple and pink. And um, we'll talk about some of the colors and their um, collector names like salmon, um, there's lilac, there's a grape. Um, so it's just basically, uh, you know, the color associated with each of these characters. Well, like I mentioned, these were sealed. My kids broke the seal. Um, but something interesting that happened, feel these. So these have been sealed for 20, 30 years. They, yeah, they feel got, they got gummier. different. They got gummier sealed in this can canister. Whereas the other ones... Heavy degradation. Yeah. The, the degraded. Oh, yeah. by the way, um, I don't have my usual camera person. So we have Brock. How you doing, Brock? <laughs> <laughs> so if you hear some sidebar conversation voices, you know the main man. Uh, rocks it happens with no two figures if you put it in plastic baggies. And they feel oh, gummy and oily. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. armor, just armor all them. It, I like it. Right yeah. Yeah. One of my other loves is uh, LJ and wrestling figures, and those two in the eight-inch scale get tacky and gummy. Yep. And some people use uh, like WD-40 and yep. Dawn just so to get yep. that oil or that. Basically, it's a release agent that correct molded into these figures. Yep. And uh, some, some figures you're going to get, you're going to go, oh, that just feels grimy and gross. But there are ways to preserve the figure, but also get rid of that tackiness. And there's a plethora of ways to do that. But, mm -hmm. um, but obviously, you want something that doesn't want to degrade the plastic or harm Correct. the plastic uh, when you clean those. And I'm sure there's other videos out there on how to clean your toys. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a little consistency different. Um, there's a consistency different in the material that these figures are made of if you order them from Japan or what we call the US release or the Mattel release versus Bandai. Yep. Um, and we'll go over those. Um, well, so we have the four pack, yep. which had a 99 cent uh, price tag. So that was a lower price point. You know, so parents in different econ uh, economic situations could go, well, I'll give my kid the four pack for a dollar or the 10 pack, which is probably, you know, three dollars or right. something yeah. like that. So four pack, Trash can, 10 pack, and then there was another version. Correct, yep. <clears throat> yep, and then the, the 28 pack. Yep. Which I alluded to, you know, one of my very first memories. And from what I understand, there was four uh, 28 Six. packs. Correct, so yep. So that one's called what? Uh, the Mighty Mauler set. There should be like a Cosmic Crusher set. So we got Cosmic Crushers the Cosmic set, Crushers, yep. Which the only difference is, you know, it has different color and it says uh, Cosmic Crushers. And we have the first one, Thug Busters. Thug Busters, which was the green, and came out with different figures. Correct. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you're not going to have the same figures in the Thug Busters that's what I was gonna ask. as that, that you would with, have yeah. in yep. the Cosmic Crush. Yeah. And as um, and right before I forget, the last, the fourth set is Cosmic Showdown. Showdown. Yep. So um, same graphic art of Kaneko Man or Muscle Man. Uh, or King Muscle, depending on, on what you know iteration you're looking at. Um, flying off the top rope, super iconic body splash pose. Um, and you've got Terry uh, Bull. Yep, Terry Bull. Um, and so, and what I what you realize as this video is going to continue is these were just wrestling figures. But as we progress, you're going to learn that there are good guys and bad guys. Basically, right. there were space invaders that came in that wanted to take over Earth. And the only way to defend Earth is the only way we know how, and that's professional wrestling. <laughs> so you've got, um, you know, a lot of these sets were based on good guys in a bulk set versus bad guys in a bulk set. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some variations here or there, but um, nice thing is you have a winter card, you've got a little bit of mystery over here on who you're getting. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, for the most part, you, you get a little window uh, that you can actually see some of your characters um, that you're getting a really cool little uh, organizational tray. So if you wanted to put them back and put them on the shelf to display, um, really cool 
Um, nice to see this in the condition that it's in. It's not all beat yeah, up. Yeah, I don't and think this was ever played with. These yeah. are the original figures for the set, and you can tell figures that have been played with because I would leave them outside. I would color them with ink. They would be in the sun. They change. Yeah, the the color's like it. white. Ever just okay. everything just gets dirty. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so moving right along, there was some sidebar accessories. So we talked about four packs, ten packs, the twenty-eight packs, and now we have some of the other accessories that uh, came with, including the Muscle or Mega Match board game. Uh, Jason, what was unique about this? Um, there were uh, uh, sculpts uh, of these characters, but some of these characters were only available in, this is uh, Lilac, mm -hmm. and this, this real bright green. Um, some of these figures were only, ex they were exclusive to this uh, this board game. So, you know, unless somebody bought the board game for you or, you know, at lunchtime, you know, over, you know, chocolate milk and peanut butter and jellies, you traded figures. The only way you were going to get those colorways of these certain figures was buying the board game. You just, we, you just reminded me of something, and I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. but if I don't say it, I'll forget it, I'll lose it. But I remember trading my good friend Danny Body and I. Every day we hung out, you know, he had a big bucket full of them, I had a bucket full of them, and we always had our favorite characters, and we would separate them out, and then it was like a barter system, where I'd go, hey, I want this figure, I really like it, and he'd go, I want that one in this color, and I would go, oh, I don't know if I can do that, what if I added this figure, and we would always be trading constantly, so it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, trading was a huge, huge thing. Yeah, that's the thing, on. too, like, if you only bought the trash cans there's you're gonna get duplicates you're gonna get multiples mm -hmm. and that became you know okay these two guys looked alike so they were my tag team guys because they were part of the same team right or they were trade fodder they're like hey i got this extra pile of guys you know and sometimes i trade you know it was super lopsided but i trade <laughs> five guys for a couple of guys you know what i mean because mm -hmm. you go i already have all these let's make it okay I, that's a pile of guys i only want a couple of those guys come on oh man. yeah you know right, what I mean? right. So, and you know, and kids as mischievous as they are, you know, you're playing with them in the sandbox, you wrestle with them, you know, you're tough on toys, and those are, you know, pretty, they're malleable plastic, but, you know, same thing, you leave them out in the sun and they start to warp or disintegrate, yeah. and, I mean, look how small they are, you know, I mean, they, I left them in a backpack, I left them in my pocket, they went through the washing machine, they went through the dryer, yeah. you know. I would shoot them with these <laughs> I would blow yeah. them up the fireworks, and I used to, this is weird, Dixie cups filled with water, put a muscle man in it, freeze it in the freezer, it would become oh, yeah. an ice block with the muscle man inside of it, and then I would shoot it with my BB gun and pieces would blow yeah. off. And these yeah. things were so uh, durable, even hitting so it with a BB. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they're a lot of fun. So we, we kind of uh, touched over the Mega Man match game. Um, which had some exclusive colors and right. variants yep. to it. It, it. it basically played like checkers. Like um, you had characters that stood outside like the, the stadium. And then with the with the turn of the, the dial, um, there was also a, a, a sticker sheet that went with this that you could see some of the stickers have been applied or have fallen off. Just kind of like, like banners, uh, kind of like in a gladiatorial arena. And uh, so, yeah, you got the instructions that were here. Um, you know, not not not, not very in depth to the game, but it was basically I'm going to take a character here and put him down in the arena, and then it was almost like the game of war, depending on you know uh, what number you got. If I got a higher number than you, my guy would win. And it was basically like chess or checkers. The last person that has their figures on the battlefield uh, kind of win uh, type of thing. So let's talk about this. Okay. <clears throat> this is the uh, the battling ring, and uh, what a cool accessory. Basically, along the principles of Rock'em Sock'em Robot, you would put your favorite action figure on one side, I would put my favorite action figure on another, and then you would use these little joysticks um, to like battle your characters in like a American Gladiators, like Pugil style Rock'em Sock'em Robot. And whoever um, fell. Yeah, and whoever, whoever like, basically fell off their podium or platform uh, would be the loser and I would be the victor. Um, super neat to see all the decals. Um, Let me focus this. It's not focusing for me. Oh, auto focus. No, 
Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So that switch. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So really neat to see an array of characters like uh, this character's name is Ramen Man, um, which you know, as you, as we progress through this, you're going to realize that some of these characters, every character has a name. Every character is either part of the good guys or bad guys. Um, elastic rope rings. This uh, is always always missing. gone. I got it from yep. Tom's Vintage Toys, but before that, I had to make it. I went to uh, like a Hobby Lobby. And found a string that was similar, and then yep. you know, cut and tied. Yep. It. Um, because of the abuse these these characters get, and the uh, different waistlines. Yeah, different so waistlines. Some lines of thicker characters. than others. Like yep. that's why he's falling out a little bit easier. Yep. But a lot ones. of these uh, areas here get stress cracked and break off. So Absolutely. when you find these, nine times out of ten, the stickers are missing. So, um, all, snapped off. Yeah. Basically, the corners, or maybe all corners, could be snapped off. Yep. And you know this is a really really good functional piece. Mm -hmm. um, the stickers, the joysticks. I mean everything about this just screams pro wrestling. It's it's very toyetic. It's got function. It's got art and design to it. It's just toyetic. I like toy that. Oh, yeah. Is that a new word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like a, it. It's a, <laughs> Jason copyright. <laughs> oh, no, no, there's there's a, the, 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 yeah. There, there's a, there's a couple other uh, wrestling collectors that. Uh, use that phrase a lot but toyetic it's something that captures the spirit of the line but also i mean this is form and function i mean i, I would display this and it's artwork to and me that's what i have it on display it's, yeah it's 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 usable you can pose figures in it um it has an arcade quality to it because mm -hmm. of the joysticks like there's just very 80s yeah so when you say this is when i you know, think of muscle men. I go to the trash cans, and then yep. I go to this battling ring because mm -hmm. it's super toyetic. Like it's just, it screams everything about this line. It's got great characterization. It's got great form and function. It's like thumb wrestling meets rock'em sock'em robots. It's just, I don't know. It's a pinnacle piece to anyone's mm -hmm. collection if you collect muscle men. Absolutely. You got, you got to have Absolutely. this ring. You got to have. So we're talking about the American release of muscle. We're going to go the predecessor with Kimiki Man, and then we're even going to talk about the modern toys that are coming out right now in 2020, which you might be watching this you know, 10 years from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that. And they're continuing to make different variations of muscle men and, and kind of kit bashing them to other lines that we like. So adding He Man and making He Man Muscle Man, adding uh, Robotech, making Robotech Muscle Man, and we'll show you some of those in a moment too. You're going to love them. Um, but the last kind of set that was uh, production that was muscle yep, related. Accessory related, yeah. Yes, was the battling belt. Really, really cool. You could put this around your waist. Uh, let's see if we can fit it on Jason here. <laughs> <laughs> we need like 30 extra belts. We need 30 belts, yeah, 30 belts to just kind yeah. of go around. Um, this one, I can't show you a really good version. I can't take it out because Mitsu the back. collector in me would have a heart attack because it is still in the sealed bag. But it's basically a way for you to showcase your champions. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you don't have to have Kanikuman and Terry Bull in there, which are the two big iconic names of this line. You know, maybe you want Sunshine, or maybe you like Ramen Man, or maybe you like Wars Man. Um, but those were the guys that you wore on your belt with pride because maybe you had a figure federation or maybe you created your own storylines and backstories for all these crazy characters. I mean, 236 characters, that's a lot of variations and a lot of different, you know, um, imaginative play um, with, you know, wrestling going on. It came out in the 80s, so you're talking about the pinnacle of like the Hulk Hogan's mm -hmm. and the Ric Flair's and all oh. of those big names um, that were synonymous with 80s wrestling. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's not out of the realm of imagination that, you know, you had your own little federation, like, you know, Jason's, you know, wrestling living room federation of muscle men, you know what I mean? Right. And, um, you know, you had a ring, you had a belt, um, you had a board game. I mean, they didn't take the footprint of collecting these characters didn't take up a lot of floor space like larger playsets at the time, like Boulder Hill from Mask or oh, Castle right. Grace Very small. And, yeah, so the footprint of collecting these were, you know, I mean, you've got probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in this little small tote and grab a handful, throw them in the ring, and, and, and then let's battle. So, and, and how the 
the ways to play were endless. How I personally developed my own style, this is gonna sound weird, and comment down below if you did the same thing, which I highly doubt you did, was I would take on my parents' uh, ping pong table a box of dominoes, and I would stack the dominoes like Jenga and make these buildings and sub-buildings and have this elaborate set of dominoes, and then I would take the muscle men and set them on the various platforms of the dominoes and take up, and I'll put a picture of me doing it. I have some vintage pictures of me doing this. Um, and I would take my leader, who's the fox guy. The fox dude was my blue favorite. Blue. Yeah, yeah. And he was the light blue fox that's right here. And he would kind of go against the entire army um, and, and go through and knock down like the support beams of the freaking uh, the dominoes and make the whole uh, structure com collapse and I just like seeing that or I would make giant sand castles and have them bust down the sand castles uh, I just had so much so much playability sure so not only were they wrestlers they could be kaiju to you like some sort of like Godzilla like creatures or Ultraman or some you know Absolutely. some sort of like Shogun like it's this tall in my hand but if I put them next to a domino and I pretend the dominoes like the Sears Tower or um, you know some sort of large skyscraper, now now I have somebody that's larger than life, even though he's that big in my hand. Oh yeah, right, sure. and you would have lieutenants and generals and different kind of uh, imagination that was, was running rampant. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And that's why I'm so excited to finally make a video that I'm so passionate about. Obviously, Jason's passionate about, um, which, which is knowledge base. Um, so we kind of talked about the battling belts, you know, the rock and ring, you know, the rock and ring. So these were all. What was your favorite one? Did you have a favorite? Um, well, the yeah, well, I'm tripping over my words. I'm super excited. Yeah. Um, if you come back to the poster here. Um, those of you that are Dragon Ball Z fans or any type of cartoon where one character um, gets defeated in his one form but then morphs or powers into something else, mm -hmm. um, there's a character named, named uh, Sunshine. And yes. Sunshine is basically looks like he's made out of a bunch of bricks. And there are a bunch of different versions of Sunshine. And Sunshine, I thought, was the coolest guy. I figured out later that he's uh, he's actually a bad guy. And through the portal of, so this is uh, Archway Sunshine in Magenta. Um, so now we're talking about, uh, so we got Series 1 Archway Sunshine in uh, Flesh Tone. Um, you've got Archway Sunshine in Magenta. You've got Sunshine as a top. So this is basically like one of his attack maneuvers that he would do inside the ring. Um, this one here, so basically the hole in his chest uh, was like a black hole and he would sometimes absorb his enemies or absorb his foes in the wrestling ring and he would he would be able to transform into, um, I would gobble up your powers, similar to like Rogue uh, would, the female uh, member of X-Men, where if she would touch you, she would get some of your powers. Yep. Uh, where Sunshine, if he absorbed you through his little black hole here, and there was a character that came out in Japan called Black Hole Sunshine. Which where, I have and I'll show you. Yeah, which um, he would absorb his enemies or foes through that and then he would gain some of their abilities and powers. So I just liked him because there was a pyramid, there was an archway, um, there was, there was, he just looked tough, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, I can't drop kick a brick wall, so how can anybody else beat this guy? Like, he just seemed to me, <laughs> he just seemed to me like, like, you know, That's the ultimate cool. version. Yeah, here's another version of, of Sunshine. So he just had so many different cool sculpts. Um, another Series 2 uh, in light blue. Um, so just, just super tough, like just, how do you beat a brick wall? Yeah. And, yeah, indestructible, yeah. So I, li I like that aspect of him, he was, you know, this looked like the goalie version, like, you know, you can't get by me, you can't get past me. And uh, just some of the other iterations that, that he had. Um, but again, uh, a lot of people's favorite is the claw. The yes, claw and that's what I was gonna go through. Now, with desirability, that affects value. So when you have a lot of people having this as their favorite figure, it makes a, you know, when I was, Collecting these, these were 30 cents a piece you could find them for. Now they're up to about $3 a piece. But with the claw, he's more um, desirable, so people are paying, you know, 15, 20, 25 bucks for just one of the flesh tone versions. And then you start bringing into uh, other variations with color, 
um, the values can go up to you know $250 because there was much lower production of certain colors and hues. And there were certain colors that weren't even made in the spectrum of colors of certain figures. So just right. because uh, you had the cloth didn't mean you had all, what is it, five, six, seven different colors of, of that figure. Yep. Now, the neat thing about the cloth too is his character design, and it's, it's pronounced in Japanese, and I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but if you say it phonetically how it's spelled, it looks like Sneegator. And basically, he, his, his, his first form was a shoe with shoestrings in it. And then as he progressed through the Kinikuman like manga, um, anytime you saw a character that had shoestrings on his chest, Which there were some. Yeah. yeah, there was a turtle. This yep. is a like a lizard alligator. Um, and then the the claw is Sneakator's final form. So you've got a shoe, you've got a gator, you've got a turtle um, that has the shoestring on it. Yep. So basically, you know, I'm I'm holding the same character, um, just in different forms. Uh, of how he evolved through the wrestling, you know, um, evolution of getting beat. I need to get bigger. I need to get more powerful, and then transforming into, you know, a different form. So, yes. um, so yeah, the claw is another like, and this, like, like how my mind goes to the trash can mm -hmm. for muscle men. A lot of people go, oh, you mean the guy? The claw. The claw? Oh, yes. A lot yeah. of people associate that. Yep. And there's a lot of neat customs. Because of that, you know, Jason talked about the the brick. What's his name? Sunshine. Sunshine, Sunshine yep. um, being a really, really iconic figure, which he is. Well, the claws also. Someone kind of again kit bash combined two of them and made this custom. Yep, that's the God Beast Sunshine. custom. Yep. Yeah, God Beast is the company, so they made kind of a Sunshine uh, claw yeah, mash up together. Mash. And that's cast resin. So I mean, dude, there's no way if you. I mean, uh, yeah, there's no, no way for you to physically. Feel this online or watching this video, but it's cast resin, and there's definitely there's nobody that's going to mistake that as one of the original characters because it feels different, different it, color. Yeah, it's different colorways. There, it's it's got a more modern you know adaptation and feel to it. Absolutely. But it just goes to show you, you know, uh, eighty three to two thousand twenty. Um, you know, uh, uh, I think his name is Marty Hansen, the God Beast, and you, know, you can find him at convention centers, and um, you know he sells those individually bagged. Um, he'll do convention exclusives on different colorways, like, hey, I'm going to be at C2E2, I'm going to be at Comic-Con, and you're only going to be able to get this claw shine colorway at my booth, limited quantities, you know what yep. I mean? So people just, when the doors open, just, you know, uh, just run to him yep. to try to get those. And of course he does them in, in colors uh, that are more mass produced, that are easy, easier to get a hold of. What I also wanted to touch base with you guys, to stay connected, I mean, I know we're info dumping and giving you tons of uh, information about this line and we got way more to go as well, but if you want more and do some research on your own or connect within the community, there are multiple sites. Now, I'm going to mention one on Facebook. There is a literal, uh, if you just type in Muscle Men on Facebook, there's a group with hundreds if not a thousand people by now because um, it just recently came out of people that are passionate about muscle men. There's buying, selling, trading, and then information about certain figures like, hey, I just came across this, and lots and lots of resources, and taking photographs of your displays and sharing memories. I shared a, a photograph of my you know, little self playing with muscle men. It was neat seeing those vintage pictures. But there's also um, not only Facebook, but there's other resources. Correct, yeah. Um, there's an administrator named John Karras who's been in the what we call monochromatic, non-articulated toys. So we're talking about like muscle men, they're solid colors, there's no articulation, they're PVC or rubber, um, you know, collectible toys like um, Matchbox had a series called Monsters in My Pocket, Muscle Men, um, and things of the like. He's got a couple mixed in there, like the hunchback guy here. But uh, John Karras uh, is a, a moderator for uh, littlerubberguys.com. Um, that's kind of where I cut my teeth on all my knowledge. Um, everything's divided up by brand specifics. Like if you like um, Battle Beasts, or you like Muscle Men, or yeah. you specifically want to know Kanikuman. Um, there's also another one called University of Muscle. And a lot of those individuals, they, they're interwoven together. Even though University of Muscle exists as its own site, um, the gentleman that produced that information has then uh, cross-dumped a lot of his 
wiki information and things that he's documented with John Carus on LittleRubberGuys.com. And then you're going to meet um, artists and sculptors like how we talked about Godby's Customs. Um, uh, a personal friend of mine, his name is Eric Nilla uh, on the West Coast. Um, he's been to Japan, he's collaborated with other artists uh, out there. Some of his wares are being sold overseas yeah. in stores um, and everything that he does is original designs but heavily influenced by... Do we have some of them in there? Yeah, yeah, let's go, we do. Let's go so. show them. So Eric Nilla kind of did his own designs. Oh, make sure you capture the <laughs> uh, gumball machine filled with muscle men, Kinikiman, uh, modern adaptations of He Man and Muscle Man, Kit Bash type stuff. I'm recording right now. I'm upside down. Hang on, hang on. Hey guys, Justice Curry here. We're here to talk about wrestling. <laughs> And most of us in the U.S. don't even know it was a show. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was a, a manga uh, in paperback form. And describe what manga is. Uh, manga is basically a graphic novel uh, to us. Like for those of us that don't like to read words, uh, it's basically like adult comic books. Yeah. Um, and you, it's weird because you read them in reverse order, so you read them like back to front. Um, but they just came out in Japan. Uh, correct. Yeah. That people would so, them out. Yeah. yeah. Correct. So uh, you know, growing up as a kid, you're like, oh, look at these cool wrestlers. Mm -hmm. But then, as you grow up, and as the dawn of the internet was more available to everybody, and you meet collectors from all over the world, and realize that not only are there variations of color, the material they're made out of, then you realize there's a 35 DVD collection of the entire cartoon what? series of Muscle Men. What? That's not including in the early 2000s, they did Ultimate Muscle, where Kanikuman or Muscle Man's kid um, has to live up to his father's name, and it was called Ultimate Muscle. So you wow. follow Muscle Man, or King Muscle, as he grows older, yep. then you follow a lineage of his child, which is Kid Muscle, and his mm -hmm. like, rise